Good morning, viewers, and welcome to another edition of the Economy and Politics Show. It's a Friday, which will kickstart the weekend already. But today, we always look at political developments across the country and the globe. Our focus today will be fixed politics, repositioning Nigeria's socio-political sphere. Well, let's give you a rundown of what we'll be discussing today. First, we look at the Senate President's optimistic view that Nigeria is on the pathway to growth. We'll be taking some tributes, looking at the late Alaji Balarabe Musa, who just passed on this week, and also former Ghanaian leader, Jerry Rollins. We'll also take the Socioeconomic Rights Accountability Project's call for accountability from ministries, departments, and agencies. And we'll go on to the Fixed Politics Initiative discourse for 2020. Let's begin with the optimistic view that Nigeria is on the path of growth despite its challenges. This was a conversation between the Senate President, Senator Ahmed Lawan, when he hosted the officials from the International Monetary Fund. President of the Senate expressed this optimism that Nigeria's economy is being steered on the path of growth despite the prevailing challenges. Speaking yesterday at the Nigeria International Monetary Fund Article 4-5 President Consultation Virtual Exercise, the Senate President said the exercise was a veritable platform to share experiences on steering the economy on the path of growth despite challenges. He catalogued efforts being made by the Nigerian government at promoting economic growth and reducing poverty in the country. He told the participants at the virtual exercise that Nigeria had to confront the challenge of limited resources, not just because of unpredictable revenue from oil, but also because of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to him, the problems have made us improve our efforts in prudent management of resources and in transparency and accountability. Our focus has been on sustaining investments in infrastructure and utilities, trusting in their capacities to stimulate economic activities, enhance growth, and thereafter improve the people's standards of living. He added that government has continued with its anti-corruption crusade aside a pledge to ensure discipline in public expenditure process. According to him, we believe that the recent crisis we had in the form of youth protests has also given us an additional idea of how much we need to pay attention to the needs of the youth in the country. Government has ended SARS and now is taking steps towards improving social and economic needs of the youth, he said. That's an optimistic Senate president, Senator Ahmed Lawan, speaking on the possibilities for Nigeria's economy. Now we take out this time for tributes to special and great leaders. First, we begin with Alaji Balarebe Musa. An iconic name in the northern part of Nigeria, former governor of Kaduna State. His passing on this week uh, came as a root shock to various leaders across the country who have been paying tribute to him. A selfless leader, charismatic politician, and elder statesman, he played a significant role in the human capital and physical infrastructure development of Kaduna State. Laji Balari Bubusa was instrumental to Nigeria's return to democratic rule in 1999 as he voiced out his opinions and missed military dictatorship on the way forward for Nigeria's polity. He was an exemplary leader who had a lot of admirers and followers that emulated his footsteps in the north and on various parts of the country and was one of the few politicians and leaders in Nigeria that was not driven by the penchant to accumulate wealth at the expense of the citizens. Balarabi Musa has joined the Hall of Fame of eccentric political leaders in Nigeria that made a mark and brought transformation to the nation through governance. Balarabi Musa, Musa, according to Muslim rights, has already been buried and his legacy will continue to endure for all Nigerians and future generations to learn from. We move on to Africa where an iconic leader also passed on this week. It came as a rude shock yesterday, but uh, if you talk about Ghana, talk about Africa and the black race, you cannot miss out a great gem and great leader in flight lieutenant Jerry Rawlings retired. He died and his death came as a root shock also across the international community. Until his death, Jerry Rawlings led Ghana in the early 80s with zeal for transformation and reform of the socio-political system to emerge as a nation that has now become the attraction in the global community. Today, Ghana can boast of strides in the education, healthcare, and investment space because of the framework of leadership laid by Fred Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings retired. Now, the West African nation has returned to uninterrupted democratic leadership, and that has also been part of the legacy of Jerry Rawlings. 
just a lesson to uh, viewers and all those who aspire to be in politics. From what we've said, Balari Musa, Jay Rawlings, there's a lot to learn that after this life, our legacies are what will be reflected on. Let's liberate legacies for others to follow. Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, one of the most active non-governmental organizations or civil society groups, has continued on its quest to push for accountability and governance in this country. This week, it hosted a forum where it raised the need for all ministries, departments, and agencies that have failed to remit their funds to the federal account to no longer receive appropriation going forward. Yes, all MDAs that have refused to remit and followed the report, the General's report of 2017, that have not aligned with the Fiscal Responsibility Act should not benefit from any further appropriation. This was a major takeaway from the presentation of the report. Above the law, how ministries, departments, and agencies are getting away with corruption in Nigeria. Serap has undertaken this uh, work not to produce the audit report, which is a, a statutory report in itself, but to analyze and to break it down and to make it easily accessible and understandable by the average Nigerian. This is part of what we do as advocacy. And for those who know us for litigation, this may be a bit surprising. But again, it's part of what we do as part of... Um, public enlightenment, citizen education, and uh, advocacy at government. Now, 1.3 billion, not deducted. ASU is saying that uh, the federal government is not attending to the university, but you can also see some accountability challenges are in the education system and focused in the tertiary sector. And this borders on how ASU itself is managing that sector. We need to deal with the civil service. I mean, I'm not saying we need to deal with civil servants. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'm saying we need to deal with the civil service. There is so much issue around that. Uh, it also has, you know, uh, recommendations for the National Assembly, for National Assembly to be more proactive in the fight against corruption within MDAs, including urgently withholding, you know, um, holding public hearings. Yes, we need to look at some all of these reports that have been submitted, you know, uh, by the Auditor General. We need, and we need to be proactive about it. We need to deal with it quickly, not for the National Assembly to keep it in its shelf and then wait for a long time. No, it's not acceptable. We can no longer trade on this part of lack of accountability and transparency and expect citizens to continue to show confidence in governance. Confidence in governance is exemplary. So you do your part as a government and citizens also play their own part. We hope that the executive will take action based on the Auditor General's report of 2017 because it's long overdue. One area that needs to be fixed very well in Nigeria is politics. It is something that everyone agrees. If you get to the primary school, ask the children. If you get to secondary school, university, everywhere, people tell you we need to fix politics. And this initiative of fixed politics has continued to engage and gather momentum across the country and the globe. Former Vice President of the World Bank, Dr. Biagile Zigozili, one of the key actors in this initiative, has said that citizen awareness and active participation in politics holds the key to correcting the ills in Nigeria's political system. She expressed disappointment that politics in Nigeria was not fulfilling the core requirement of a democratic system, which was to provide good governance for the well-being of citizens. She made this uh, uh, claim again during the public launch of Fixed Politics for 2020. She presented findings from her fellowship research on how to fix politics in Nigeria at this forum, and particularly in Africa in general. Dr. Ezekwezeli, speaking on the Fixed Politics Initiative, called for more accountability and transparency. She was also joined by former president of Mexico, Mr. Felipe Calderon, who said to fix politics, we as citizens need a new attitude to politics. According to him, politics must be understood to be a moral right and duty by citizens. To fix politics, he said there is need to abandon the idea that politics is all about power. There is need to provide political participation with ethical sense. I like that part. Also speaking at the public launch of the Fixed Politics Initiative, former president of Malawi, first female president of Malawi in history, Dr. Joyce Banda said the global political system needs leaders that are accountable. 
For regions like Africa, she believed that politicians must come to the realization that power has shifted. She challenged the Nigerian youth to be actively involved in the political system to effect a change. Former Central Bank of Nigeria Governor, Professor Chukuma Suludo said, fixing politics will require a conscious participation of the citizenry. It was of the view that Nigerians should be actively involved in the political system and quit the habit of complaining about the process. Also adding his voice to the public launch of fixed politics, former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Atahe Rujaga said in transforming the political system, Nigerians must think long term, not short term. Yes, long term, not short term. And so definitely, if we can fix the political system, we will get accountability and transparency from MDAs, we'll get inclusive economic growth in the country, we'll get transformative leadership like we had from the likes of Alaji Bala Rebo Musa and Jerry Rollins. We will also see the prospect for growth, which is the optimism showed by the Senate President of Nigeria. And indeed, we will have shared prosperity, vibrant nation on the path to progress and development. We must, therefore, take these conscious steps to fix the political system. The time is now. That'll be all for this edition of the Economy and Politics Show. You can send your views and comments on how we can fix our political system. What areas can we address to fix Nigeria's political system? Send your views and comments to news at proshenji.com. We'll be happy to receive them and respond to you appropriately. You can log on to our website, www.proshenji.com, to watch our videos, news stories, and reports. Go to the right side of the bar, and scroll down to politics. We have lots of articles and reports around the political sphere. People also send in their opinions and um, views for publishing. So a lot of rich articles there for you to learn from. We're heading to a very eventful weekend. We just wish you all the best this period and whatever you're doing, continue to engage on robust political economic conversations. This is wishing you a lovely weekend ahead. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day and stay safe.